today to do some book reviews and the two books that I'm going to be reviewing are actually kind of game companion novellas. I don't know what they're technically called but they are game tie-in books and those are the Infinity Blade series. Book one is called Awakening and book two is called Redemption and they are both written by Brandon Sanderson but as I say they are game tie-ins to the Infinity Blade game series. So recently I have been trying to read as much Sanderson as possible and read all of his novellas and various short works that I haven't read up until this point. After reading this series of books I actually only have the Alcatraz series to read which I'm really excited about because loads of people have been saying it's amazing recently but I normally wouldn't pick up a series that is a game tie-in series because I don't play that many games, I don't really consider myself to be a gamer and so normally I probably wouldn't pick up this sort of book, however because it was by Sanderson I hoped that I would enjoy it anyway. And the first book that was definitely true, I didn't know anything about the world of Infinity Blade, I didn't know anything to do with that, but I felt like I could easily approach this book and get straight into it, there was nothing necessary to have played the game to get into this book. I thought it was a really really fun one and very enjoyable straight away. I would definitely say that you don't need to have played the game to enjoy Infinity Blade Awakening, but if you have played the game I'm sure you will get more enjoyment out of it, so it's up to you if you want to or if you don't. I went into it literally knowing nothing about the story, the world or anything, and I enjoyed it just as much as any of the other short novellas I've been reading by Sanderson recently. And I came away from the story enjoying all the twists and turns and enjoying the magic and enjoying the world as a whole. I thought it was interesting. The characters themselves were the ones that really defined this story because there wasn't enough of a word count to really get into the world and all of the magic systems or anything like that so it's much more about characters than it is about anything else. It's very true to Sanderson's style, it seems like he was writing a very genuine book. It could easily have been one of Sanderson's own ideas because the magical systems that they have in this world seem really interesting and very similar to ideas that Sanderson has put up in the past in his books. All of the powers and stuff for example I assume they come from the video game but they just seem really cool and interesting so that was something I liked a lot. We actually follow the storyline of Sirius who is a sacrifice after he has defeated the God King who is supposedly undefeatable and many many sacrifices over many many years have gone to try and defeat the God King who is a really ruthless ruler and they've tried their best to defeat him in battle and no one up until Sirius has actually been able to destroy the God King and beat him. We follow all of the troubles that he faces after having destroyed the God King. Basically people aren't too happy that he's gone and destroyed their ruler even though he was a tyrannical maniac. I won't say any more than that because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. It is only a very short story but it does get really interesting. As I say it's largely character driven this one. It's not much about the world, it's very much more about the powers and the characters, which was a cool thing anyway. The one thing that I did feel like it lacked was a little bit of why, a little bit of explanation, but I suppose that is because it is a game tie-in and you would presumably know a little bit about the game if you were reading the books, unless you're a fan of Sanderson and you're just reading it because it's by him, like me. But a lot of people I'm sure who have read it will have that background knowledge, whereas I didn't, so it felt a little bit jarring at points that I didn't quite know everything that was being explained. I also thought that maybe that was due to the fact that there was a second book and maybe it was kind of holding out on the first book to get you to read the second book, but that wasn't true so forget I said that, that was just the thought I had whilst I was reading it. Overall I think it's a really fun addition to the Sanderson series. I actually really enjoyed the first one and I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 star rating which is pretty good. It was a really fun story, really interesting, had some very cool characters and cool ideas but didn't feel as fleshed out as a normal Sanderson because it is a game tie-in. Moving on to the second one in the series which is Infinity Blade Redemption. I actually had a huge problem with this one, especially because it was the second instalment in the series and I read it straight away from the first one going into the second one and I ended up really hating the second one because there is a huge gap 
between the end of the first one and the start of the second one, which basically assumes that you will go away and play the second game or the first game, I don't know which, but the game itself tells you and fills in the gap between those two stories, so if you haven't played the game before reading the second one, you're going to be a bit confused because you're in a completely new place, the characters are the same, but they're in an entirely new situation that I just didn't expect from the ending of the first, so... Yeah, I was a little bit annoyed that there was that necessity of having to play the game to actually understand it. I felt like that kind of limited the readership and really limited the enjoyment after that point because it was very confused and very muddled. And if I hadn't looked it up, I wouldn't have known that I'd missed a whole chunk of the story by not playing the game. I would have just thought that Sanderson's writing was crap. So, you know, it was a little bit disappointing. Basically, the first half of this book was very confused and although stuff was happening and it was interesting, it just didn't capture my attention anywhere near in the same league as the first one did. It was very much a disappointing start that led into an okay middle that led into a decent end. And that was just a bit disheartening for me because I wanted it to be a really fun story like the first one had been and it just didn't have that. It lacked sort of substance to it. There was a storyline but it was a little bit jarring and things felt a bit out of place and didn't feel like they flowed as well as a normal Sanderson book or as the first one. I know that it is obviously marketing the game and it is a game tie-in and that is the big selling point of this book, but for someone who hasn't played the game really, I feel like it alienates the readership and just puts up a barrier kind of stopping your enjoyment, which was a real shame. Once again, we do have the same main characters from the first book. We have the God King, who is called Radria and the main character from book number one who is called Sirius and in this book Sirius kind of takes a more backseat role and we see a lot more of Radria's storyline. It wasn't as exciting as the first one. Basically they have to take on the Watcher and they have to try and defeat this person. There was also a kind of background storyline that was going on that was kind of filling in the past of how this world came to be. I enjoyed that bit but it was very confusing and didn't feel like it had a real place. It did feel a little bit kind of squeezed in rather than a nice uh, integration into the story. There wasn't that in the first book which is why I think it felt a little bit jolted when it was inserted into the second. Basically things do happen, the storyline does progress but it doesn't feel anywhere near in the same league and it just feels a little bit dead and a little bit pointless as a story. I would say that you could read the first one in this series and quite happily end the series in the first book. I won't be continuing on with the series, especially knowing that I have to play the games to get it, so I don't know if there will be a third one. But even if there is, I don't think I'll pick it up because it just wasn't for me. This game tie-in second book really disappointed me. If you play the game, definitely pick it up, but if you haven't, I wouldn't recommend the second one. In the second book, Radriar's character is quite annoying as well and irritating. Basically annoyed me for 90% of the book and then at the end he kind of has an interesting character development which makes him a more likeable person. Equally, Sirius, who is the other main character, was in a kind of permanent battle with the dark self and he didn't really progress at all as a character, he just stayed very static and sort of had internal fighting going on but wasn't really doing that much in the story. It was just a very disappointing follow up to the first book which was really good so yeah I definitely wouldn't recommend this but meh, that's how I would describe it. It was just eh, like there was merit to it and it did follow the first book but it just wasn't that great. So this one I only gave two stars to, which was a disappointment, but you've got to have one book that just isn't for me, and this is the one by Sanderson that just isn't for me. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. I would love to know if any of you guys have played the game, or if any of you have read these novellas. Let me know down below your thoughts about them, the game and the novellas. I'm interested in both, so yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat about the